I was looking at an early football shot the other week. Um, you sort of stood in the garden with your foot on a ball, age four or five, and all I wanted to do from that age was it was score a score a goal in a cup final at Wembley. When, when you realise sort of you actually are realising your dreams, not many people get to do that. So quite privileged to have had that experience, and you wouldn't swap it for anything. I think that's a boyhood dream. Every boy has dreamed. My recollection of it was Ray, Ray Stewart scores against Liverpool in the, I want to say the Little Woods Cup or the League Cup. And he's, my auntie's in his class, grown up at school and from a really small village. We used to see Ray in the summer. Ray doesn't know that he's the inspiration for me to do what I did. Whether it's the changing room or in the tunnel, I, th I think psychologically we were got the upper hand then. We were vocal, we were very confident, we had beaten um, Bolton, so um, obviously you're still going to go and do it, but we were feeling good and um, there wasn't a lot of pressure on us. It's a great group of men. I think that was a thing led by a great man. You know, I think that's, I think that's it in a nutshell. We were a team. As a, as, a, as a force, and he'd actually he'd gone on about it for a long time, the manager, and said, you know, collectively, individually, there may be better players, but collectively, you, you're a decent team. Paul Robinson thinks you won the game in the tunnel. Richard Johnson thinks you won it in the changing room, like when you were playing, was it uh, everything I do, I do it for you? I, th I think the song was ideal for us, just in terms of where we were as a team, because it was very much about a team rather than having individuals so there wasn't a standout star person and lyrics of the song was everything I do I do it for you was the selflessness it was about sort of the team over the individual and I think that resonated with everybody and I think if you look at the characteristics of the team it was that everybody in in the team would have done whatever they could to help out the mate if somebody was in trouble they did it because they wanted to, not because they get recognition for doing it. They did it because they wanted to help the mate out. And from a from a team ethic and sort of strength of a team, it's a fantastic place to be. I was so relaxed to have a little look at the camera and smile as I walked past, remember it. There was some noise when you came out of the tunnel though. I remember looking up, yeah. Just switched you on, didn't it? They, they, they started well, they started well and it, who knows if they'd have scored one or two of those, totally different game. But um, I think Robbo made a little mistake and the ball bounces past him and that's a great chance. And then Alec makes a really good save from a free kick. Top player Bayes was. Yeah, he was. Good football player. He's got brilliant quality with his crossing, so I'm surprised he didn't pick someone out there. That is probably the only bit that you'd say, yeah. It surprised you that he's not he's put it on someone's head. We didn't really have much height in the team, so if truth be told, we didn't really have good headers of the ball. Yeah, Pete has put a great ball in, uh, right under the crossbar, so really nice. difficult to defend. Yes. Header out, um, yeah, spontaneous reaction. Um, people have asked me what I'm thinking, it's too quick to really think, other than you face it the wrong way, try and get as decent contact on the ball and hit it as hard as you can, and then all of a sudden there's an incredible noise and yeah, you're, I'm running off and getting mobbed, which was incredible feeling. I don't know if it's Robbie Elliott, but I'm trying to look through his legs to see where where the ball went, and that's where he's just moved a little bit, and sort of you see Ngongi's arms went up, and yeah, that's some moment. What's the ref saying to you there, by the way? Can you remember? I said, "This is Wembley, ref. It's Wembley, ref." You watch my lips. That's what I said. I didn't swear. It's Wembley, ref. This challenge is a straight red now. <laughs> yeah, for him. Oh, you've just two footed I've him. Done, I, you know what? I've done really well to get up there. You talk about injuries, I tell you, I've got, I get done knee high there. 
I, I said before that all you're doing in that tackle really is I had a feeling he wasn't going to play the ball and I just thought I'd better do the same. It's two simple but brilliant passes before the goal, isn't it? Micah's little ball, perfect weight to Peter, Peter one touch, then perfect weight and then not a bad that, finish. That, that, that pass there, there's a lot of people would have kept running with the ball. Yeah. The, the Micah's pass. No, I could, the, 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 that finish there, to be fair, that was quite a... It was a nice finish and all I was bothered about was just getting contact on it. it it's it's quite strange in terms of a finish because not many people would have gone outside of the boot. Not many no. people. Most people would have just put foot straight through it and sort of just watching it to go outside the boot. Some just some relief fun. after the goal, you can probably see in the celebration there. It, that's where it yeah. was like really start to celebrate. One goal can be anything, but two goals with only like three minutes to go is... I managed to get second win there. I would, I'd come off knackered. And <laughs> yeah, you did. I've got so many. Fo- I've got so many. And incidentally, I've got so many photographs. You think it was his goal? He'd already had his his celebration in the first half, didn't you, Ralph? And you had to come and jump all over my photos. I know. <laughs> no, I, was... That was that was my quickest win <laughs> of the day for that celebration. I looked up, run fifty yards, and got there in the time you've done about twenty. <laughs> I think everybody was in shock. Now it's gone in. Massive testament to Gibbo as a man. He'd been left out and wasn't on the bench, yet he's the first one up congratulating the manager. And I think that says a lot about Nigel Gibbs as a person. Yeah. Yeah. We we were on the pitch for some time afterwards. It was ages. Um, Yeah, we we were celebrating for ages. You don't know where the the emotion comes from, really. You know, like when when I watch it, I mean, I'm very emotional anyway since I've had my kids and stuff like that. Very emotional. But um, at that point, I felt like I was howling for about 10 minutes. <laughs> I remember after the game, I was ages before I got back to the changing room. Cause, um, straight after the game, there was a big like media piece. And I, I think I went with the, I had to go with the gaffer and sort of uh, do a little bit of media stuff and it turned out to be about 20 minutes half an hour and it was ages before I got back in the room and you just you just wanted to go and celebrate with everybody and couldn't and it's like by the time I got in there everybody's like sort of chilled out a little bit sat down just having a beer and like I missed me, it it's me and you in the bath on our own and I would never swap what happened to me that day I never got to celebrate with my team in the dressing room and you know what that's what I would change the press can wait and I can go and see the press once I'm sure I've changed. Uh, one of the one of the funny ones with the family though, when when I scored the goal, um, my brother had actually he missed it. He'd gone to the toilet, so he missed me scoring a goal at Wembley, which is yeah. But again, another nice touch. My granddad, um, so um, he'd been watching me play from sort of seven, eight, nine, going at home and away reserve when I was playing in the reserves at Derby, going to like. Sunderland on a Tuesday night he'd come up and watch every game and sort of him being at Wembley was sort of massive plus and I think they're the they're the big things that are really important when you've got to to progress in football you need lots of support from family and it's just it was a really nice sort of experience that well that they could experience it and share in it the haircut, I, I, I still get my kids ridiculed. Smile with the sunglasses. The, su- the sunglasses are even worse, aren't they? I've got like the cheapest, <laughs> worst sunglasses on ever. You thought they were good at the time, didn't you? Yeah, I thought I looked amazing. Oh, it's fantastic. I think probably anybody who was at the game, it's just, uh, I think the first time for the club to go into that level in that way, into the Premier League, I mean, you know, they were in the old first Vision, but the gaffer always had actually said that year, hadn't he? That the way to do it is if you're going to choose a way to do it, you better to do it through the playoff final than, than any other way. I think, from I was looking at an early football shot the other week um, when it was clearing out, clearing out um, cupboards, and we sort of stood in the garden with your foot on a ball, age four or five. And all I wanted to do from that age was. It was score a score a goal in a cup final at Wembley, and it's probably the FA Cup when I was growing up. But then, to be fair, it's not not a bad substitute. And when when you realise sort of you actually are realising your dreams, not many people get to do that. So quite privileged to have had that experience. Um, you wouldn't swap it for anything.
No, and I think my recollection of it was Ray, Ray Stewart scores against Liverpool in the, I want to say the Little Woods Cup or the League Cup and he's my auntie's in his class growing up at school and from a really small village we used to see Ray in the summer Ray doesn't know that he's the inspiration for me to do what I did Hey you, click here for more videos.